30 weeks, you are seven and a half months along and you only have 10 weeks left to go. You are officially three fourths of the way through your pregnancy. And when you say it like that, doesn't it feel like you are almost done? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you might be feeling at this point in your pregnancy. I'm gonna talk about baby development. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the skin changes that you might be experiencing during this part of your pregnancy. But first, if you're new here, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant. I specialize in women's health and gynecology, and you are watching In the Pink. And In the Pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, click subscribe because you're in the right place. At this point, you are probably really starting to feel pregnant. You're probably getting some swelling in your ankles. You might feel bloated. You're getting moody. You're tired. Your tummy's starting to get big. But hang in there, you're really getting close. Be aware that your belly is starting to stick out quite a bit more now. And this can really throw off your balance because your center of gravity has shifted. So be careful when you're exercising or when you're walking up and down the stairs. Let's talk a little bit about your baby. At this point, they're about 16 or 17 inches long and they weigh three pounds. And they're gonna be gaining about a half a pound every week. They are moving around in about a pint of amniotic fluid. And the bigger they get, the less space they have. So from about 28 weeks to 32 weeks is considered the peak of your baby movements. So they are moving quite a bit. And it's fun because you can gently push on the baby and they might kick or punch back so I kind of like that as you get further along you will feel less big flip-flop movements but you will still feel plenty of movements now speaking of baby moving remember to continue your kit counting and if you aren't sure what those are I talked a lot about them last week and also week 29 now your babies are continuing to learn to do amazing things they're sucking their thumb they have hiccups a lot they make faces they can taste the amniotic fluid and they can hear and recognize your voice so keep talking to them, sing to them, and then have other loved ones do that too. Earlier in the first trimester videos, I talked about the baby developing fine hair on their skin called lanugo. This helps to keep them warm, but now your baby has developed more fat cells and that lanugo will start to go away. When they're born, they might still have some lanugo on their body, usually their backs or their shoulders, especially if they're born a little early, but over their first few weeks, any lanugo that they have will fade out. Let's talk about the baby's brain. Now up until now, believe it or not, the baby's brain has been smooth, but around 30 weeks, it's starting to develop Develop grooves and indentations so over the next 10 weeks the baby's brain will triple in weight but if you count from about 24 weeks to 40 weeks the surface area of the brain will increase by 30 times and it does that through those grooves and indentations that is now developing and your brain does this so it can hold more brain cells at this point, most OBs want to start seeing you every two weeks. So let's talk about why they want you to come in more often and what they are checking for. So at your appointment, they will usually check your weight to make sure that it is on track. They want to see a gradual weight increase. And by monitoring it, they can tell you if you are gaining too much weight or not enough weight. They will usually have you give a urine sample. And here they can check your urine to look for infection or protein in your urine. And if you have gestational diabetes, they might also also detect sugar in your urine. They will also check your blood pressure. High blood pressure when you are pregnant can be really serious. And I'm gonna break down high blood pressures into three types of high blood pressures. You can have chronic high blood pressure that you had before you were pregnant. You can have something called gestational hypertension or high blood pressure, meaning you didn't have high blood pressure before you were pregnant and then you developed it after 20 weeks of pregnancy. And then there's something called preeclampsia. Now preeclampsia is when you have high blood pressure while you're pregnant and it causes damage to an organ system like your kidneys or your liver. And this can be quite serious if it isn't managed. And so that's one of the reasons it's so important that you go get your regular routine OB checks. As for the baby, most of the time they will measure your uterus, they will check the baby's heart rate, some OBs check ultrasounds every appointment and some don't. 
and it's important to know that most of the time you don't really need an ultrasound. It's just fun for you as the patient to see your cute baby by ultrasound any chance you can get. Now there are circumstances where your OB will want to check an ultrasound more often. Maybe if you're having twins or if they are monitoring your fluid level or your placenta. There are other tests like non-stress tests your OB might choose to do if they want to monitor the baby a little bit more closely as well. Now one thing I haven't mentioned in a few months is your skin changes while you're pregnant. Because of increased pregnancy hormones, you might notice darkening skin changes. And the most common place to see this, freckles, moles, um, your nipples or your areola, in between your thighs and even your genitalia can become darker. Some women develop a dark line that goes from your belly button down to your pubic bone. This is called the linea nigra. Not everyone gets it, but it's really very common. You can't prevent it, but don't worry, it will go away after the baby is born. Something that won't go away, but you can prevent is something called melasma. Some people call this a pregnancy mask. What this is, is hyperpigmentation or darkening of the skin that can appear on your cheeks, um, on your forehead, but also your neck and your arms. Melasma doesn't go away after you deliver, but it will fade over time for most people, but not everyone. So prevention really is the key here. Now your skin is more sensitive now that you're pregnant, so the best way to prevent melasma is to use sunblock every day, like every single time you go outside. It's also not a bad idea to wear a sun hat and wear a long sleeve shirt if it's not too hot. Melasma is somewhat difficult to treat. It's possible, but it requires special treatments, sometimes in the dermatology office. So I'm serious when I say it's so much easier to prevent it than to treat it. You might notice red streaks up and down your abdomen and sometimes your breasts too. These are called stretch marks and are very common during pregnancy. About 50 to 90% of women are gonna develop them during their pregnancy. And they usually develop them late in the second trimester and into the third trimester. Can you prevent them? You know, some companies wanna convince you that you can so that you will buy their products. Studies haven't really shown that you can prevent them or that these products really make a difference, but it probably doesn't hurt to try if you want to purchase certain creams, that's probably just fine. But here's what to consider, risks for developing stretch marks during pregnancy. Two big ones are being overweight or putting on too much weight too quickly and having family history of stretch marks. So like, so much of that is out of your hands. You can't change your family history and you absolutely will have weight gain during your pregnancy. But what you can do is try to keep your weight gain in the healthy range, which is about 25 to 35 pounds if you started off your pregnancy in a normal BMI and 15 to 25 pounds if you were overweight when you first got pregnant. And you can do that by exercising and eating a healthy diet. Some other things that you can do that might help and that won't hurt Make sure you're drinking plenty of water and have a nutrient rich diet that include things like uh, vitamin C, D and E and also zinc and protein. Ask your mom or your grandma or maybe your older sisters if they developed stretch marks during their pregnancy. If they didn't, there's a better chance that you won't either. But if you do, just know they're not gonna stay dark red or purple forever. They do fade to like a light or a silvery color, making them more difficult to see. And on top of that, I consider them badges of honor. Like you are growing a human being in there. It never ceases to amaze me that we can do that. It's like the most amazing thing ever. So to have these little reminders that we did that, I think that's pretty cool. The last few skin changes to talk about, itchiness. Now if it's just an itchy belly, that's pretty normal. Just get a good moisturizer to, you know, keep that belly soft. And I'll link to my favorite in the video description. But if you have itchiness, all over your body, so not just your tummy, but everywhere, talk to your OB, because that could be a symptom of something called cholestasis of pregnancy, and your OB needs to help you with that. Also, if you have an itchy belly and a rash on your belly, talk to your OB. You could have something called a PUP rash, which stands for pruritic uticarial papules and plaques of pregnancy. <laughs> Kind of a mouthful, that's why we call it a pup rash. That's treatable as well, your OB can help you with that. So a rash on your tummy and an itchy tummy, talk to your OB. If you notice that you're having back pain, uh, leg cramps, leg swelling, acid reflux, issues like that, 
I talked a lot about those in some of my earlier second trimester videos. So if this is your first time to my channel, I highly, highly recommend that you go back and check out some of those earlier second trimester videos. There's a ton of good information that can help you out. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, so you'll be notified of our future videos. I do have a pregnancy series that will take you through pregnancy week by week. Also, be sure to drop a comment down below. We all love to read these comments, and so make sure to say hi down below. Right here, I will put a link to my video series that takes you through your pregnancy week by week. Click on that video, and I will see you over there. The phrenic nerve is now developed and it's working well and usually spasms a lot around this time. You can tell that it's a hiccup rather than just like a regular baby movement because a hiccup is kind of a more regular repeating movement. 